Welcome back everybody, it's VST here at NSP Tech and this is Android 12 Beta 4. One of the most important updates already here. We have been waiting for this, right? Finally. Now we have, and that's not actually the latest Android 12 widgets for which you can check my video here. This is the famous Android 12 Easter neck, right? So if you know where to go and what to do, you're gonna get these nice widgets, right? So into the Android version, you can see Android version 12. What you need to do, guys, just stop several times, boom, here it is. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please stay safe. Uh, okay, no. I'm not joking, guys. This is indeed the latest Android Beta 4. This is here the Easter neck. And in fact, this is a very important release. With this release, Google are hitting the so-called platform stability milestone, which means that Android 12 is very close to getting a public release. What does a public release mean? If you have a Pixel phone, probably like me, I'm using the Android 12 since the very first developer preview one. That's probably not big news. But if you are also like me using other brands like Samsung and Xiaomi, this means then One UI 4 based on Android 12 is hopefully somewhere around the corner. By the way, if you like tech reviews, you can check out my channel and perhaps decide to subscribe, which it's gonna be really much appreciated. I do a lot of tech videos, reviews, app reviews, software reviews, benchmark tests, and etc. Also, I do a lot of mobile photography videos. There are some quite nice things out there. If you're keen, please check this. And now back to Android 12 Beta 4. Now guys, there are not so many new things, but there are still some new things because it's closer we are getting to the final public release as polished the Android 12 become. In general, here we have the same menu, same volume rocker that we already seen from the previous beta, okay? When we go here and check the quick settings, they all look right now like this, and I bet my fingers that a lot of the other Android skins out there, right? I hate the word Android skin, because I think the Oxygen OS or the MIUI or the One UI are really like their home breed of operating systems, but okay. But I bet my fingers that a lot of them will kind of copy this design because this is really what Google is setting. So although all of this looks quite familiar, there are some new changes. One of the first things I've noticed is when you open a page and when you go to the recent menu, right, and you hover over this page, now you're gonna get a very easy sharing option for the picture. So I have here this person, the Biden, okay, I can click, boom. I can very nicely share it, save it, or do whatever I want with this. In the previous versions, we only got here the share button, which is also quite useful because you can just copy, copy the link or share it directly from this menu there. It's a very, very tiny and small, but yet very useful addition. Cool keyboard, the Gboard also has a very nice redesign. When you now click and try to type something, you might see that it's gonna be aligned with the colors that you use. This comes from the fact that they have added here a new option to team it. So it's called right now dynamic color, which pretty much means that every time you change your whole wallpaper, the design of the phone is going to be aligned with this. I've shown this before in the other beta, so you can check my video here for the beta three and the beta two and the beta one. This is the so-called new material design. When you go into the wallpaper and style, you have several options here, and all of those colors are really derived from the wallpaper. One must say that's nothing really big, and I know that we already have this into Samsung One UI theme park, but seeing this also in the stock Android makes me very, very happy, right? Besides the wallpaper colors, you also have basic colors, so you can just go and do something like this, right? Then you can just apply it, and now see all my menus here are gonna get changed. And if I go back and show you the Google Keyboard, I would expect the Google Keyboard to change as well. Now there is also a new addition. When I go back to Wallpaper and Style and scroll down a bit, you wanna see here that we have themed icons. We had this before, but now they put it clearly, Team icons better. What this does is, let me show you guys. Right now I have my stock icons, you pretty much can recognize YouTube, Spotify, Play Store, and etc. But if I go back and if I select team icons and go back to my launcher, boom, I'm gonna get a lot of my icons now themed automatically according to the color I've chosen. Now, not all of the icons are themed, but a lot of them are themed. And okay, this is why it's called team icons better. 
Now I'm gonna change the wallpaper to show you a bit more from the material web because I really love it. So let's go for that one. Okay. Now I'm going to apply it both on my home and lock screen. I will now go to wallpaper colors and I'll select let's say this palette. Okay. This palette now has been selected. Okay. And now I'm going to see what will happen. It is a very dynamic and very colorful wallpaper. If I do like this, boom, you can see colors derived from the wallpaper. If I'm opening Google Keyboard here, boom, again, you can see it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Material UI and don't get me wrong, I know it's not rocket science, but it's just so aesthetically pleasing. Again, I like it quite too much. Let me take a screenshot. I'm going to use the buttons, okay, do something like this, boom, screenshot taken. Now I can choose to edit the screenshot and now markup has been redesigned and it's also a lot easier, right? So you can adjust the window here. You also know that Android 12 supports now scrolling screenshots. I'm not going to show it because I've shown it in the previous video. Right now, the only new change here is the addition of this nice markup tool. But it's not over. There's some other things that are now hidden into the menu. So allow me to go into the menu and show you some of the new things that you can find. If you go inside your menu and you go to privacy, you're going to release something called Private Computer Core. Get suggestions based on the people, apps and content you interact with. And this sounds a bit like from the future, right? But in fact, this is the old good device personalization services, right? Right now it's renamed. It has this very fancy menu name called the Private Computer Core device learning, keyboard, clear data, of course, if you want to do so. So that's also one of the new things from this beta. The network and internet menu also has been redesigned a bit. When you scroll down, you're going to see something called adaptive connectivity, extends battery life and improves device performance by automatically managing your network connections, switching from mobile connection to Wi-Fi, and why not just allowing your phone to do this, right? Get more battery, apparently. And also, I think they brought back here the toggle for the Wi-Fi. So it looks like this. Now it's inside the internet menu. I want to take the phone in my hand and show you some real usage. Because that's fairly an old phone, is the Pixel 3a. But everything runs so smooth. Um, in fact, I'm really happy that Google are making this possible. Because we only know that Apple has this. People out there running iPhones 4S for seven, eight years, and they are probably still getting some updates. 4S, of course, not, but iPhone 6, 6S probably getting updates. I think Google are heading into that direction. And we see also other brands like Samsung embracing this. OnePlus a bit also, Xiaomi and etc. But it's very good that you can buy a phone and use it for one, for two, for three more years, because not all the people out there are like you watching this video uh, and me creating this video. I mean, we are nerds, right? So we know about this. But regular folks out there, this is quite nice for you guys. If you even have an old phone like the Pixel 3a, which can do actually quite nice pictures, you can still use the latest Android. I said nice pictures and I'm not taking my words back. In fact, the Pixel 3a is still delivering some astonishing pictures while only having one camera. I mean, what was the last time, guys, you saw a phone with one camera? Please tell me, was it yesterday, was it one month ago, or maybe two years ago, right? The pictures of my cat taken by me, and what can I tell you, guys? They're really amazing. Again, one camera, old phone, but latest Android. For those one that missed the show from the previous videos, I am now into the settings menu, and I'm gonna show you some of the top menus. First, with the battery. So this is right now the battery menu from the settings. You have the battery usage. It looks quite nice. You have also the app usage for the past 24 hours. You have battery saver. You have battery percentage here on and off, right? Did you see the fancy animation, how it's wiping? I kind of like that one. And you have something called adapted preferences, extend battery life based on your phone usage. Why not using machine learning and artificial intelligence to just get more out of our devices before we become slaves to them, all right? Let me also show you the storage menu. This here is the storage menu, right? You can very clearly see how much you've used, how much you have, system apps, whatever. You can also go and free up space with again using Google Files, clean, browse, everything here really conveniently stored for you, okay? Let me also show you the display section, brightness level, the adaptive brightness, the lock screen, dark theme settings, so you can either automatically use it or just do this by sunset and etc. You have also the night light, you have the colors which right now are adaptive, boost, natural, okay, this is the calibration, you have the screensaver. I am now into the settings menu. Remember this ripple effect when you were touching something, people really were hating it. I was kind of like, yeah, okay with it, but people didn't like it. 
Google listen and now they remove it. So now every time you touch something, right, you will not see this ripple effect. And by the way, this is what happens when you go you know, to the upper section and to the lower section. The last menu I want to show you guys is inside the privacy menu, the famous privacy dashboard. It's something, by the way, that Xiaomi already implemented into the MIUI 12 device, which is still running on Android 11. So here we have the location and the camera and you can see which apps have used those resources from your phone and you by the way also know this very fancy trick every time you put the camera on you're gonna get here this indicator right when you also try to put a video on with microphone right you're gonna get the same indicator so your privacy is kind of not protected and if some applications are using your microphone or your camera resources you'll know for sure about this speaking about camera resources screen recording menu is also updated Right, you can now record audio okay, from the microphone, from the device audio or from both, meaning device audio and microphone. Right? And you can also show touches on the screen. I think that's a nice addition to the already existing screen recording. And with that said, guys, one final look, scroll to the right. We have now here the Google Assistant. Now, this is kind of like how it looks. Right? I think they change it several times, but this probably will be like the final design, honestly. I like it and guys I really hope that you have liked this video if that's the case don't hesitate like it subscribe to my channel if you think it's worthy and guys please you and your families guys stay safe until we meet in one of my next videos with that said VST over and bye